welcome to the welcome to the twelfth video in the series. We've had the uh, year end. Sure enough, the um, pirates decided to attack us. Uh, we auto resolved that. The pirates are still in their base, of course, um, because they've come out to attack us. So we've done them some damage. They've done us some damage, and they're remaining in their own capital there. Okay. Give me a quick check of the technology. See if I can trade some technology. I always do this. I cut a load of these out of the game actually because I, I can sometimes spend I don't know half an hour um, in one turn just trying to trade technology with people. And it's not something that you're going to have fun watching. At least if you know how I do it. You know, for those people that haven't tried to trade technology, then um, no, that would be worth doing. Okay, user story, playing around with taxation. I'm just going to increase it by, decrease it by. feeding troops into uh, Flanders again there. Uh, sorry, from Flanders into... Oh no, sorry, what am I talking about? It is Flanders, yeah, drip feeding troops into Flanders there. Checking taxation again. Now you've got extra troops in there. Um, it helps quell rebellion. As a matter of interest, you know, I'm sure it'll come up later in the game as well. Uh, light troops are a good way of um, keeping the population in check. Particularly dragoons, it, the, the, uh, it's been factored into the game. It's a good idea. That, um, the kind of infantry that can run around with muskets and sort of ride out to farmsteads and any areas of rebellion, you know, um, are the best people to have to suppress rebellion. So you get sort of like plus points in repression with those. I have been watching, of course, my ministers just to see if I've got pluses that I need for repression. You know, the ministers of justice, etc. There you go, drip feeding ships as well into my main fleet there. He is building fleets there, you can see. Uh, French fleet. Um, it's got some uh, uh, troops in there as well. I'm going to stop him taking those anywhere, of course. I'd love him to come out of uh, port with those troops on that ship, but he's not stupid. If he comes out of there, he'll be within my zone of control. I'll be able to intercept him. I'll wipe out his ships, and I'll take his armies with them as well, with me at the same time. Then I'll just bang a couple of ships into his port there to um, stop him producing any more. Ever looking towards recruitment, of course. Flanders, as I've explained before, very vulnerable. Another dilemma I have in the game there, you can see just off to the right there, that um, uh, farmstead. You know, do I spend money on agriculture? You know, when the economy isn't growing very well, sorry, when, when the population isn't growing very well, do I need more food anyway is one of the issues for me. So I have to tax very highly. And it costs a lot to upgrade buildings. If they'd leave me alone in Europe, I'd have a fleet, and I'd go sailing around everywhere, um, capturing ships, making money out of that. And maybe that's because British piracy's in my blood. <laughs> Sorry about this, a bit boring. I, I do spend, honestly, I, I spend hours um, editing these um, videos. I do leave some in, and I, I wonder how many I should leave in sometimes, but you'll see me do that a lot, play around with taxation. Uh, usually uh, I make the decision not to take it out if it's going to disturb the picture, you know, if it's going to shoot you from one place to another. Usually it doesn't, but 
you know, it's a lot of sort of like messing around, cutting and splicing. So other times I'll think, well, I can't be bothered either, you know. It's only a few seconds they can watch something they've seen before. Um, anyway, these are the Indians. Club for Dutch Guyana. I'm going to take French Guyana now. It's not worth anything. Won't be able to make any money out of it for a long, long time anyway. But it gives us a chance to see some Indians whacking about with axes, which is quite good fun. Uh, towards the end of this battle, um, I'll do a couple of close-ups as well, so you can see what the Indians look like when they're taking on militia. I like watching the Indians. I did the Warpath campaign. Great fun. Um, it's great fun to do once for me. You know, all the different Indian nations are, are very similar, except they're in different geographical positions. Um, well, it's the same sort of tactics, really. You know, sort of occupy the enemy to the front and then attack from the sides and you know, break the enemy's morale. You know, don't let him get into a situation where he can line up and fire at you. Now, these are melee-based troops. Close combat, that means. They use axes. Um, they're superior to his in close combat, but of course they will take fire going in. Don't forget, in the early stages of the game, he'll, he's only going to be able to fire one rank, that's the front rank. So the most I'm going to lose is 5, 10, 15 men going in. We get a charge bonus. I forget exactly what it is now, you can check that out in the game, but um, uh, it's, it's quite hefty, the charge bonus. So, if the, um, for instance, if his uh, combat strength is, say, 6 or 7, you know, mine will be, say, 7 or 8, but I'll have a charge bonus of about 13. Yeah. When you're attacking the town, I think I've mentioned it already, well you've already seen it, um, the troops will be on the other side of the town, so you have to fight your way through it in order to get there. Um, he hasn't got a lot of troops in this, um, so he's likely just to put them in the buildings. Which is great for me, because firing out of buildings is not as effective as firing in line. Uh, really, the benefit of being in buildings is that you're safer from people firing at you. We're not going to be doing. It'd be funny if the Indians could um, surround the building and get hay and just burn it out, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, but uh, anyhow, that's not something that's been factored into the game. I think it would probably create an imbalance, actually. Notice the um, enemy have occupied one building to the right and one building to the left. So I'm sending one lot of my troops there into the building on the right. Um, usually I'll creep up behind another building if I can, so it limits the amount of fire, the amount of firing that they can put in. Sometimes I'll contort myself into some really narrow column, almost march formation, in order to hide behind a building so that they, they can't fire at me. And then what I'll do is I just charge um, along the side of the building, you know, so I get um, a minimum amount of fire going in. If I've got um, fire-based troops, I'll get them to fire at the building while I charge in with my melee troops as well. So different techniques really with buildings but um, certainly um, once you get into the building the um, superior combat troops um, have a great advantage which is fair you know once you're through the door that's the way it is and in fact in the doorway you have an advantage don't you so really superior melee troops will um, wipe out enemy troops he's even got one stood outside the building there maybe the building was too small to get all his troops inside Get a bit of a close up in here. Uh, video is about to end in about 20 seconds. Um, I think I managed to contrive it so that I can get enough close ups for you to see some of the close up action that's occurring that you don't see on the big battle map. Uh, you see some axes going in there, a bit of Indian fighting. <laughs> 